Hey guys, alright? Welcome everyone. We begin by seeing the future in New York, a base built in the center of the city where prisoners are taken to the isolation zone. Some who remain are hunted by something deadly, which leaves no chance of escape. In Moscow, ships hover in the sky, and soon they release something akin to robots, known as sentinels. A group of mutants is hiding underground, and, aware of the approaching danger, two of them leave the area while the others await the confrontation. Soon enough, the creatures arrive and the fighting begins. The mutants use their powers such as fire, shapeshifting into metal, teleportation, and the Iceman. However, the Sentinels manage to copy the physical powers of the mutants and communicate with each other to share what they absorb and use it as a counterattack. Unfortunately, they manage to use it in the most powerful way possible and easily defeat the team. A mutant named Kitty, who has powers like phasing through walls and connecting the minds of those she touches to go back in time and communicate with her past self, completes the process when the Sentinels begin to enter the vault where she is, and before the super android can execute its attack, everything disappears as if nothing had happened. In China, Professor Charles manages to find the mutants using his enhanced powers with technology. They go to a hideout where the same mutants from the fight with the Sentinels are. Mutant Storm and the nearly immortal Wolverine descend from the aircraft. With them are the Professor and his old friend Magneto. Bob, who has ice powers, greets them, and then everyone enters the place. Kitty explains what she does every time the Sentinels attack them, sending the mind of one of them back in time to warn of the attack. The team also consists of Apache, the mutant who senses the presence of Sentinels from afar, and Bishop, the mutant she sends the mind back to warn, and Blink, who uses portals to go to another location. Knowing this, Magneto tells Charles that such an ability could help them win the war. Charles tells everyone that the Sentinel program was designed by scientist Bolivar Trask in the 70s. He tells that the scientist, in his research, began to use mutant DNA in his projects, until Mystique found out. She was a mutant who could transform into anyone, so in the peace treaty of the following years, she made a choice, disguised herself, and killed the scientist. Unfortunately, such actions prompted the government to continue the deceased's project. On the same day, Mystique was captured, mistreated, and subjected to experiments with her genetics. Charles tells them that over the years of research, Mystique's DNA was studied, and finally the secret of her transformations and genetic adaptations was discovered. This gave scientists the trigger to create a very powerful weapon in less than 50 years, giving the Sentinels incredible and very dangerous capabilities for any mutant. The professor concludes that everything originated in that year when Mystique decided to commit such atrocity. Kitty understands that Charles wants to go back many years ago, so that he can reach Mystique and convince her not to do such harm, thus avoiding the war from starting. Kitty warns that she tried to go back only a few weeks, and says that such returns can destroy the mind gradually and reach the critical point of no longer working. Wolverine then asks if it would be possible to send a mind that regenerates faster than it destroys, referring to himself. Logan closes the vault of the place, while the rest stand guard and wait for the Sentinels, who lately always manage to find them, no matter where they hide. Before being sent back, Charles and Magneto ask Logan to find them first and convince them to help, before anything else. Asserting that this may be difficult, because at that time they had a very different mindset from today. Kitty warns Logan that the experience he will live, with unlikely good endings, he will be the only person who will remember everything when he wakes up, asserting that he will be in a different place and situation from that moment they are now, whether good or bad again. However, she tells him that he is the only chance, so he must act quickly. Kitty initiates the painful process in Logan, but he suddenly wakes up in the bed of an apartment, along with a woman he was sleeping with. He looks at himself in the mirror and notices that he now looks younger, then checks the year he is in. Suddenly, three men burst into the room accusing Logan of being with the daughter of their gang boss. Logan claims he doesn't know what's going on, but the men order the woman to leave as they prepare to beat Logan. Unfortunately, not knowing who they're really up against, the three men are startled when Logan reveals his bone claws, as at this point, it's before his enhancement with adamantium. The men shoot at Logan, but they soon discover that bullets do nothing against the mutant, as his regenerative power is incredible. Logan counterattacks and easily defeats the three men. Meanwhile, at the American Security Council, leaders question Dr. Bolivar's project, as incidents with mutants, which they can't even be certain exist, have never happened. 
Bolivar explains his thoughts on the matter and cites texts written by an Oxford professor, without mentioning Charles by name. The scientist adds that they shouldn't wait for the worst to happen and become an uncontrollable chaos. However, after the discussion, the leaders inform Dr. Bolivar that the Sentinel program will not be authorized to proceed. At a military base, a colonel enters a tent where mutant soldiers are waiting to be transported elsewhere. He goes to find out where the mutant soldiers will be taken and discovers it's to scientist Bolivar Trask's industry. A major enters with a group of private military personnel who have come to retrieve the mutants and are about to drug them to take them away. The colonel approaches and questions why the mutants would be returning home and not to the industry. The major says he has orders, but suddenly the colonel transforms into Mystique and subdues him. Seeing that Mystique is helping them, the other mutants assist her with the military personnel. Then, the group follows Mystique disguised to an aircraft, where the boys will be taken home, but she decides to stay. Back to Logan, he arrives at the old Xavier school, apparently abandoned. He gets out of his car and calls out for someone. Hank appears and says the school has been closed for a few years. Logan shows he knows Beast and leaves Hank stunned, but Logan forces his way in and asks to speak with the professor. Hank tries to prevent the stranger from entering, but Logan punches him in the face and goes to look for his friend. Suddenly, Beast surprises him and fights Logan. Fortunately, Charles, much younger, appears, and Logan is surprised to see Charles walking, as he should be in a wheelchair. Logan introduces himself and says that Charles sent him from the future and he would know if he read his mind, however, Charles claims he no longer has powers for that. The professor is bewildered by the stranger's knowledge and thinks he's from the CIA, but Logan starts talking, showing that he knows details of Charles's life when he was younger. The professor begins to believe Logan's words and asks what he wants there. Logan then explains that they need to stop Mystique. He reveals what will happen in the following years, where the weapon created not only killed mutants but also non-mutant humans who nevertheless had the mutant gene in their DNA, so their children would be born with powers, so they were also eliminated. Regarding Mystique, Charles shows no interest in helping, as she will not listen to him. Logan becomes furious with the professor and confronts him, saying he has lost a lot and risked everything he had to come back and change the future. Even so, Charles doesn't care and goes upstairs to take his injections, or Hank says that this is what treats his damaged spine, thus making him walk. However, this paralyzes his powers. Reflecting for a moment, Charles remembers who Mystique is to him, so he comes down and decides to help Logan, and knowing they need Eric, Charles warns him that he is not the same as before, but rather a monster. Charles also says that Magneto was imprisoned in a cell with no metal around, many floors below the Pentagon building. Logan says he knows someone who can help them. Meanwhile, in Scientist Bolivar's office, Raven, disguised as him, manages to enter the room and looks for important documents. She finds a secret compartment and finds what she was looking for, files of a secret weapon and documents of dead mutants for experiments. When the receptionist goes to the office, Raven is already disguised and quickly leaves the place. Logan, the professor, and Hank arrive at the house of the young man known to Wolverine. The young man's name is Pietro, better known as Quicksilver, and possesses a high-speed power. Charles tells him where they're going to invade, so the boy becomes interested. The team takes a tour of the facility and, taking advantage of a space, veers off the path while Hank hacks into the surveillance cameras. Quicksilver enters the elevator and dominates the guard who would bring food to the prisoner, soon he disguises himself and leaves the guard tied up with tape. The young man manages to enter the prison without any trouble and hands a note to Eric, explaining what he's going to do. He touches the glass and, with the speed of his hands, creates a frequency that shatters everything. However, the room automatically seals shut, leaving the two of them trapped inside. Eric exits and warns that guards will enter shooting, but young Quicksilver quickly approaches, saying he hopes that happens. They head for the elevator and wait a moment, during which young Pietro mentions that people said he could control metals, and his mother had met someone like that, indicating that Eric might be his father. Charles and Logan begin evacuating the kitchen, but two guards appear, so Logan springs into action and takes them down. Then, Charles opens the elevator and confronts Eric for the troubles of the past years. However, Charles insists they need to stick together and get out of there without causing any deaths. Suddenly, guards armed with non-metallic weapons, but lethal bullets, burst in. Charles can't control them, so Eric starts using his powers, everything around freezes. We see Quicksilver walking freely among them with his super speed, taking advantage of the confusion to make the guards hit themselves and deflect the bullets that would hit the others. Time returns to normal and, thanks to Quicksilver, everyone gets out of there alive. 
Moments later, they catch a flight to Paris. Meanwhile, Raven forcibly approaches a Vietnamese captain and manages to lure him into a private suite. Mystique quickly reveals herself as a mutant and chokes him until he passes out, then takes an invitation to a peace conference between leaders. On Charles's jet, he and Eric discuss Raven's fate, in which both had a hand. Charles blames Eric for leading Raven to make such choices in the future, where the end result is the death of all of them. Eric says they can still change the future and apologizes to Charles. The next morning, scientist Bolivar gathers some military leaders to discuss the threat that still lurks among them but will soon reveal itself as a destructive force. The scientist presents his sentinel weapon, designed to be effective against such threats and identify them from miles away, ensuring the safety of humans. He demonstrates the sensor that identifies mutants, and to their surprise, it activates, alerting them that someone among them is a mutant. The scientist points and identifies who it is, discovering it's the same Captain Mystique knocked out. The leaders try to apprehend her, but she reveals herself and starts a fight among them. Some flee the room, but those who stay she defeats, then grabs a gun and points it at Dr. Bolivar. The soldier electrocutes Mystique, but Magneto and the others arrive and save her from danger. However, Logan suddenly begins seeing memories of his future, which confuses him. Meanwhile, Eric grabs a gun and aims it at Raven, saying she's the beginning of the end, so she must be eliminated for everyone's future. With Charles unable to use his powers, he compels Mystique to run for her life, but unfortunately, Magneto can curve the bullet and hits her leg, exposing her on the street, where people see her. This gives the scientist an opportunity to leave the room. Logan starts becoming unstable in the future and wounds Kitty, but Magneto controls him by paralyzing him, however, his mind in the past becomes lost, and he doesn't know how he got there. While outside, Mystique transforms into a random woman from the crowd to escape. However, Magneto doesn't allow her to escape and pulls her close by the bullet lodged in her leg. But before he can kill her, Beast attacks him and tries to subdue him underwater. As Charles tries to calm Logan, Magneto attracts metal around him to grab Beast. The soldier in the room manages to escape alive, looking at Wolverine's claws. At this point, we already know him to be Stryker, the same man who later in the future will subject him to the painful enhancement experiment with adamantium. And Logan has flashes of memories from this forgotten future. Magneto searches for Mystique among the crowd but doesn't find her. Meanwhile, the press films Beast, and this moment is recorded in history, showing the world that mutants exist and are highly dangerous. Kitty manages to stabilize Logan's mind, causing him to return to the past again, but they need to leave the scene since the chaos is uncontrollable, with people seeking answers. The leaders watch the news, soon the current president asks for information from his aides. He discovers who the mutants are through the scientist, who warns that just two of them are enough to cause global destruction. The president asks what they can do, so Bolivar presents his sentinel project, advanced robots made of polymer with no metallic alloys in them. However, the president agrees to initiate the Sentinel program under the condition that Mystique remains under Bolivar's control for scientific experiments. Eric, tending to his wounds, watches the news and sees something worrying, as Raven's blood was taken and brought in for research. So, he heads to a train station, where a homeless man grabs him. Raven reveals herself to him and confronts him about why he tried to kill her. Eric says they received a message from the future, where because of her, all mutants were destroyed. However, Eric reveals that he no longer cares about killing her because now the government has her blood, and thus the feared future will still come, and now the blame is on him. However, Eric says he saw the weapon designs and, knowing they will be further enhanced, says they need to act and destroy them. Eric says he wants to kill all enemies, but Raven says she doesn't want to start a war and tells him that Bolivar is the enemy, as he killed her friends, and killing him is the revenge she seeks. At Charles's mansion, he begins to feel pain in his spine, and the voices return to his head. When Hank goes to fetch the injections, Logan says it's not over yet, and now they need Charles and his powers to find Raven. Hank brings the injection, but upon reflection, Charles decides not to take the dose and goes to his room to get his wheelchair. Meanwhile, the scientist analyzes Mystique's blood samples and tells Stryker that he needs the mutant to further advance his sentinel project. Outside, we see the robots being transported and observing the scene is Magneto. Professor Xavier returns to the Cerebro after years and uses the amplifier of his powers to find Raven. However, Charles's mind is rusty and causes a malfunction in the amplifier. 
Logan, knowing that Charles needs mental help due to the losses, mentions that a few years ahead, he was his student, and the professor helped him find himself mentally and become who he became. Logan then asks Charles to look into his mind, and when the professor does, he sees his own future. Charles goes further and sees himself in the vault where Charles and Magneto, now older, are. He manages to communicate with his future self and says that Eric was right about humanity. However, the experienced Charles says that not all is lost, and not every stumble means a fall. The old professor encourages his younger self to do what is right and make the best choices so that there can be peace in the world, between mutants and humans. The wise words of the professor strengthen the mind of young Charles, motivating him to move forward with hope. The scene shifts, and we see Magneto on top of the train transporting the robots, he uses his powers to move the tracks and make the metal intertwine and become part of the robots. Back in the future, the mutants await the sentinels in their hideouts. Bob helps Kitty with her wound, but she's weakening due to blood loss. Bob wants to stop the process, but the professor warns that if they do, the future may become even darker. In the past, Raven is at the airport lounge to leave the country when suddenly an elderly lady tells her to stop running away and go back home. It's Charles speaking through the lady, as his powers have returned to what they were before. Raven doesn't care and starts to leave, but Charles uses the people to alert her that if she continues with her revenge plan, evil will always arise and in an even more brutal way. Charles forces himself into her mind and projects himself in front of her, saying he knows what happened, but revenge isn't the best option. Unfortunately, she remains tough and leaves. Charles says she's going to the capital, Washington. Hank then takes the two to see the news and shows what will happen the next day, where the president will meet with military leaders and the new mutant defense advisor, Bolivar Trask. Hank questions whether the future may be correcting itself, or Raven must kill the scientist, and the future is indeed what Logan already knows. Charles contradicts, stating that not everything is lost, and Raven isn't who she's showing herself to be, going to kill for revenge. Therefore, they will go to Washington in the hope of changing the future. At the Pentagon, Eric easily infiltrates one of the facilities with the aim of retrieving what belongs to him, his helmet that protects him from Charles. On the professor's plane, Logan asks him that despite whatever happens, he will gather the X-Men, be their leader, and guide them to wise paths and hopeful peace. In the future, Apache senses the Sentinels approaching a few kilometers away, putting the professor and Magneto on alert. In the past, Charles and the others managed to enter the president's pronouncement event without any issues. While the president showcases the weapons to the world, Charles tries to find Raven among the crowd. Magneto goes to a football stadium and simply tears it from the location using the metal in the structure, heading towards where the president is. Charles finds Mystique disguised and paralyzes her before she can kill the scientist. During the presentation, the robots activate on their own, leaving the scientist concerned because he didn't trigger them. Suddenly, the robots start shooting at police cars, startling everyone. Meanwhile, in the future, Storm uses her powers to spread fog and damage the Sentinel transports, but they are activated and fly towards her. The mutants initiate the attack with Bishop absorbing energy from Storm and shooting at the Sentinels through the portal created by Blink. Mystique manages to infiltrate along with the leaders and the president into the secure vault of the White House. While Magneto continues to terrorize the population, controlling the robots and bringing the field to surround the White House. He then positions the robots as guards. In the future, Magneto launches the ship against the group of approaching sentinels, and together with Storm, they detonate the nuclear reactor of the aircraft, causing the destruction of seemingly all. The group realizes that Magneto has been injured by something non-metallic, but the worst is yet to come. A sentinel suddenly appears and attacks Storm, impaling her with its arm like a spear through her back. The enemies were not destroyed and managed to approach by surprise and attack. Bishop takes a power blast from three sentinels but can't withstand the amount of energy and explodes along with them. Magneto closes the door of the place with the metal he can control and is transported inside the vault, while the others try to prevent the sentinels from entering. In the past, young Magneto orders one of the robots to attack Logan and Hank. The Beast tries to attack the robot, while Wolverine tries to confront Magneto. However, the mutant uses iron beams to pierce Logan's body, leaving him immobile, and then throws him into the bottom of a lake, where the weight of the iron sinks in deeper and deeper. Inside the President's bunker, Mystique is discovered, but Eric, finding the bunker, begins to pull it from the earth, and the flickering lights allow Mystique to hide and attack Major Stryker. 
Eric finally retrieves the bunker and opens it with ease, then grabs the agent's weapons and turns the cameras to the location. Charles, at this time, was trapped under the concrete and doesn't have much to do. Magneto expresses his fury at the human's actions and says that from that moment on, they will not hide and will not be attacked anymore. In the future, the mutants trying to stop the Sentinels are killed, cut in half, burned, and pierced by their enemies. The last defense is Bob, who shoots his freezing power at the entrance to delay the Sentinels. In the past, the president approaches Eric and asks for only him to be eliminated, and when Hank injects the mutation inhibiting injection, the Sentinel sees him as human, but sees Magneto and the President as mutant threats. When attacked, Eric shreds it, and seizing the opportunity, the President, who was actually Mystique, shoots a non-metallic bullet that hits Magneto's neck, leaving him unresponsive, she then knocks him out with a kick. After that, she goes to shoot the scientist, but Charles paralyzes her mind and convinces her that up to that moment, she's shown they are good, however, the action she takes now will lead to an endless war. He could take her down, but the professor teaches her that hope for a future of peace exists, but the right decision must be made. In the future, Bob is killed, and finally the Sentinels reach Charles, Magneto, Kitty, and Wolverine. When the Sentinels attack them, suddenly everything returns to normal as if nothing had happened, showing that Mystique made the right choice. Without the helmet, Eric is subdued by Charles, who makes him remove the irons from him. Coming to his senses, Eric bids farewell to Charles and leaves, shortly after, Mystique also goes her way, with Charles telling Hank that they will reunite again someday. The scene changes, and we see Logan waking up several years later in the future as Kitty mentioned, but feeling a bit confused. He leaves the room and finds himself at Xavier's school, with many other mutant students. Among them, Bob and Rogue, in another room, Kitty presenting a project to the others, Hank, Storm the instructor, and, further ahead, Jean, a love he had to kill in another time. Logan is happy to see her again, as the last memory is of having to kill her for the greater good. But now in that future, Scott is still her boyfriend. Finally, he approaches Professor Xavier, who, knowing Logan's memories are returning, is pleased, showing that the future of destruction has been transformed into one of peace and harmony among the races. Soon after, we see what happened to Logan after being thrown into the lake by Magneto, or apparently over several months he was found and rescued from the lake. We also see one of the guards reading a newspaper stating that the Sentinel program has been cancelled. However, Logan, with his exceptional healing factor, remained alive even while drowning and thus could recover once again to live on. We are then transported to a very ancient time, to be more precise, to the time of the construction of the Great Pyramids. There we see someone being worshipped as a god, and we can know that it is Apocalypse, who will bring a new challenge for the mutants in the future. Check out the recap of the movie for this new adventure that we have already brought here on the channel.